Hi guys, welcome back to Codemaster Coach, your medical coding tutor. Today we're talking about headaches, migraine, narcolepsy, etc. So, let's start off with headache and migraine. We all know what a headache is, but in order to be, when you're diagnosed with a headache and just plain headache, that's coded to category R51, headache. However, if your physician says migraine, then you move to category G43. So the key here is that you need to know the difference between the two so that when your physician diagnoses um, of a migraine, you know not to code headache, go to the migraine category. A migraine is a neurologic syndrome and it's characterized by an altered body perception, severe headache, and it has nausea and vomiting. Approximately one third of people who suffer from migraine headache provide or perceive an aura or a wavy vision type thing. It's an unusual visual or other sensory experience that signals that a migraine will soon occur. So they have some kind of little warning just before it comes, but it's coming. They know it's coming. Okay? An intractable or a type of migraine refers to a pain that is so severe that is not curable by any known means. So when you hear the term intractable, know that that means whatever you normally take for your headaches, if you have an intractable migraine, it's not going to do any good. It's going to require you to go in. A lot of patients with migraine end up in the emergency room and they end up having to get an injection of a um, narcotics, some type of op opioid, opioid medication to help with fast um, recovery from that migraine headache because normal protocol, normal steps that you would take for a headache or a migraine are not going to work and that's why a lot of migraine pa patients tend to be on a long-term type of medication. It's a daily type of medication that they take one to prevent the, the migraines from coming on but to try to get ahead of the migraine because once it hits a full-blown migraine there's nothing that the physician really can do. He can try to give you those um, narcotic type injections for pain, but it's just, it's got to work its way out. Um, status migraines refer to a severe migraine attack that lasts for more than 72 hours. Status migraines should be confirmed by a physician. So before you code it, you make sure that your physician is diagnosed it as a status of migraine. Migraines are, as stated before, migraines can be found in category G43 and specific types of headaches. Now there are specific types of headaches, not just unspecified. Remember earlier we said unspecified headache is R51, but when he goes into specifying a type of headache, that can be found in category G44. So take the time to look in your code book and look up the difference between unspecified headache, R51, and different types of headache. Start at category G44, and then your migraines at categories G43. And then when it's a headache that's following a lumbar puncture, remember a lot of patients are given lumbar punctures in their spine. If that patient gets that headache afterwards, that's coded at G97.1, other reaction to spinal or lumbar puncture. So there's a, a code that specifies that type of headache. All right, so what's narcolepsy? So I'm hoping you guys understand what we're doing here is I'm trying to explain to you what these diagnoses are because as a coder, not once, once my physician diagnoses the patient with these conditions, I then look in the medical record to confirm. And the only way that I can confirm these diagnoses is to know what to look for. Okay? So you know what to look for between a headache and a migraine and an intractable migraine. So now let's talk narcolepsy. Narcolepsy is a chronic neurologic disorder and it's characterized by the inability to regulate sleep and wakeful normally. Symptoms are excessive daytime sleepiness, sleep paralysis, which is a paralysis upon falling asleep or waking up, cataplexy, 
which is a sudden brief episode of paralysis or muscle weakness, and vivid hallucinations, which are vivid dreamlike images that occur at sleep onset. Okay. Other possible symptoms are disturbed nighttime sleep, leg jerks, nightmares, and frequent awakenings. Irresistible sleep attacks may occur throughout the day regardless of the amount or quality of prior or nighttime sleep. Affected individuals may fall asleep at work or school, while eating, while talking, or even while driving. ICD-10-CM distinguishes between the subcategory G47.41, narcolepsy, and G47.42, narcolepsy in conditions classified elsewhere. The fifth character distinguishes between narcolepsy with cataplexy, which we said earlier was a sudden brief episode of paralysis or muscle weakness, and in G47.411 and G47.421, and without the cataplexy, G47.419 and G47.429, okay? That's narcolepsy. Now let's talk hemiplegia, hemiparesis. Hemiparesia or hemiplegia is paralysis on one side, hemi, one side of the body. It's classified to category G81 with a fifth character to indicate the side that's affected, whether it's the dominant or non-dominant side of the body. When information is not available regarding whether the affected side is dominant or non-dominant, and when the classification does not provide a default, then follow the following guidelines. For ambidextrous, patients who could be either right or left-handed, the default is also the dominant. So in other words, right hand prevails. If you're right hand, that's your dominant side. If you're ambidextrous, which means you can be either right or left-handed, right is your dominant side. But if you are a left-handed individual and you, you know, claim that left hand is your dominant side, then your left hand is dominant. Okay? Because with hemiplegia, we have to dis dis distinguish whether it's your dominant or non-dominant side. So just remember, if you're right-handed, that's your dominant side. If you're left-handed, that's your dominant side. And if you're ambidextrous, which means you could be right or left-handed, right prevails. That right will always be considered your dominant side. Okay. The guidelines apply to codes from category G81, hemiplegia and hemiparesis, and subcategory G83.1, monoplegia of lower limb, and G83.2, monoplegia of upper limb, and G83.3, monoplegia of unspecified, okay? So that same guideline applies to one limb, whether it's dominant or non-dominant. Hemiplegia occurs in connection with a cerebrovascular accident, or a CVA, often clears quickly, and is sometimes called a transient hemiplegia. So a lot of times with stroke patients, if they suffer hemiplegia, a lot of times it will disappear, but we still code it, okay? We still code it. Hemiplegia is not inherent to an acute CVA. Therefore, a code from category G81, hemiplegia and hemiparesis, is assigned as an additional code when it occurs, even if it resolves without treatment it affects the patient's care. So even if they say now if you catch a stroke within four hours that physicians can go in and prevent you from having any side effects of a stroke. So even if when you went in you did have hemiparesis on one side of your body, if that clears up by the time you're discharged as a coder I still code it because you had it when you came in. We still had to treat you for it even though it's resolved upon discharge. Because I can remember at a time, we, one time we said that if it clears up by the time of discharge, you don't code it. But if we're still treating it, you do code it. So always understand, with the CVA, 
Cerebrovascular accident, if the patient suffers hemiparesis or hemiplegia, we code it as an additional code, even if it resolves by discharge. And any neurological de deficits that are caused by the CVA should be reported even when they have resolved at the time of discharge. So a lot of times they have dysphagia, trouble speaking or trouble swallowing, both of them, we code them. When the patient is admitted at a later time with the hemiplegia or hemiparesis and is due to a sequela, remember we said a sequela is um, an old um, a resi residue or a residual effect of a CVA, a code from category I-69 is assigned to include or indicate that that condition is a late effect of a CVA. So if your patient comes back in at a later time, with the hemiparesis or hemiplegia because of a stroke, then we identify it with I-69, category code I-69, to indicate that it's a late effect of a stroke. All right, let's put some of this together. Let's do a little bit of coding today, okay? I'm going to show you four examples that we're going to code. Let me see how I can get this on here. All right. Number one, cerebral thrombosis with transient right hemiplegia that is cleared by discharge. Okay, take your time, write these down, pause your video, whatever you have to do. Number one, cerebral thrombosis with transient right hemiplegia that is cleared by discharge. Number two, Cerebral thrombosis with hemiplegia, right dominant side. Cerebral thrombosis with hemiplegia, right dominant side. Number three, hemiplegia of left dominant side due to previous CVA. Hemiplegia of left dominant side due to previous CVA. And number four, hemiparesis due to old lumbar spine cord injury. Okay? If you will, pull out your code books. You know, some of those bright lights. All right, we're in ICD 10 CM. Number one said cerebral thrombosis. So, first thing I did is I went to thrombosis. So when I go to main term, and I do have a tab to help me speed through this a little faster. So when I go to main term, thrombosis, and I go down to cerebral, I have a note that tells me, see occlusion artery cerebral. You see that? When I go to cerebral artery under main term thrombosis, it tells me at cerebral artery, C occlusion artery cerebral. Okay, so when I go to occlusion, Main term occlusion. I'm under subterm artery, cerebral. See, it gives me I 66.9. You see that? And you always confirm your code by going to I 66.
0.9. Occlusion and stenosis of unspecified cerebral artery. So that's your first code, I66.9. And then it said, with transient right hemiplegia that has cleared up before, by discharge. But remember we said, if patient has it, we code it, even if it is cleared up by discharge. So then we go to main term hemiplegia. Got so many flags in here because it's going to answer. There's hemiplegia, main term hemiplegia. Right there. And see how it says... G81.9. All right, let's go back to G81.9. G81.9. And then this said that um, right hemiplegia. So, hemiplegia, right dominant side right there. So it's G8191. So that's number one. It should be I66.9 and G8191. All right, number two said cerebral thrombosis with hemiplegia, right dominant side. Guys, isn't that the same thing we just coded? So number two are the very same codes. I66.9 for the cerebral thrombosis and hemiplegia of the right dominant side. It's right there. All right, number three, hemiplegia, left dominant side due to previous CVA. All right, so let's go back to hemiplegia. Hemiplegia. Main term, hemiplegia, right there. All right, and this said left dominant side due to previous CVA. So we're going to go down and identify the fact that it's following a stroke. So there it is, stroke. So that's I69.35, okay? So we're doing hemiplegia following stroke. Gives me I69.35. So let me go back here to I69.35. I69.35. There it is. I got it flagged. I69.35. And here, the, you have to add your sixth digit. It's a two because it's stated of the left side, left dominant side. So I35 point, I69.352 point would be your answer to number three because it's identifying left dominant side. And then the last one, hemiparesis, and I should have took some of these stickies out of here and that'll speed me up a little bit here. This was hemiparesis due to an old lumbar spinal cord injury. So, because I already know the hemiparesis, main term hemiplegia, and here it's ascending, not elsewhere classified because it's of the spinal, but it's ascending, I know, it's not elsewhere classified, is G81.90, identifying the spine, Okay, and it just said hemiparesis, it didn't say anything more. The key here is identifying that it's due to an old spinal cord injury. So if I go to injury, main term injury, and go down to, it said spinal cord, but it specified lumbar right there. And that gives me S34109. We all see that? So when I look up S34109, S34109, right there. Okay. I know that I need to add a seventh digit because my little red seven in the box and of my digits it tells me this is a sequela so it's S so the codes for number four should be G8190 and S34109S for sequela 
because it's an old injury. Okay, guys, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.